Hey everyone, here I am uh, finally recording a tutorial. So for a quick um, 411, this tutorial is going to be super simple. We're just going to go ahead and cover some of the very light core basics of Blender. So that means we're going to build some shapes, move them around, create some materials, create a camera, show how you can position things onto the camera how you can set up a very basic lighting scene and have a very simple render in Eevee. Super simple stuff, um, more yet to come, but if you're, this is your slice of cake, here it is. Without ado, so let's start recording. So what's going on here is um, in this tutorial, I'm not gonna go over the whole setup and layout. Feel free to let me know if, if you want me to you know, make a video that dives a little more in depth into what each piece of Blender kind of does and what we'll do. But for now, within this tutorial, we're just essentially going to focus on getting the tasks that we need done. So first things first, everyone should start up Blender. Um, <clears throat> when you start it, you're going to have a few things already kind of in your um, place. You'll have a cube, a light, and a camera. We're gonna go ahead and delete all of those. So the way you do that is you'll be left clicking and holding shift. And then when you press X on the keyboard, you'll get this prompt to delete it. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, how do I move the camera? What's going on? The way you move the camera is uh, you're gonna pretty much press your middle mouse button. And this is how you're gonna move the camera in Blender for all those with like a Mac. It's been a while, or not a, a non an Apple mouse. You're gonna you can pretty much drag it by clicking this area on the top right. But I'm not gonna to dive too deep into detail with the controls. So what we're gonna to do to start off is you're gonna press. We're gonna spawn in a cube. We're gonna get our shapes uh, rolling first. So you're gonna press uh, Shift A for a cube. Now I'm gonna teach you how to kind of grab and position these shapes. So when you left click the cube and you press G, which stands for grab, you can, you know, kind of click and move it around, but we wanna keep things pretty uh, aligned and clean to start off. So within Blender, you have a few axes. You have your Z axis, which is up and down. You have your X, which is depending on what your position is. Uh, it's a kind of like up and down. I don't know what you would call this. And you have Y, which could be left and right. But like I said, it all depends on your position of your camera, right? So what we'll do for now is we'll spawn our cube. And what we're going to also do is bring in a camera because we want to make sure the objects are kind of positioned in the right way of the composition for what everyone else is going to see. You know, we've got to get that up and running. So press shift a one more time just go look down press camera your camera's going to be probably be inside of the cube actually it's backtrack 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 press the tilde key press and hold and do front and what essentially what we're going to do is when we spawn a camera in after doing that essentially it'll be perfectly 90 uh, degrees and we'll have a really nice uh, camera kind of angle and what I did right there is I press G uh, and then I press Y to drag it away from it so as you can see now we kind of have this setup and you're probably wondering okay well how do I view the camera Micah um, you can view the camera by pretty much toggling you, if you have a numpad I don't know how many of you guys have numpads at this moment in time but I don't have one um, you can click this camera button and I'll bring you right into what's viewing on the camera. When you move, it leaves it. You can also hold down tilde, view camera that way. Um, so you're probably wondering, oh, are we gonna do everything from viewing the camera? Uh, a bit of a yes and no. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the workplace. Uh, it's a bit of an advanced tactic, but hey, let's just dive in. So when you right click, when you get your mouse and you see this like double arrow kind of thing, right click and when you click vertical split, then you click again, you can now split your workspace. So this can help you optimize um, 
optimize productivity, I guess. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna activate the camera in our right hand workspace. So now, if you mouse over in here, you can now play with everything. You can move the shapes. You can see what's going on at the same time and you won't, you know, you won't start setting things up and you have to work backwards because you're like, oh, like I really screwed up here. Like my camera, it makes no sense. Um, and that's a mistake I made while kind of setting up the tutorial. So I wanted to make sure I, I clean that out with you first. <sighs> All right, let me get a sip of tea. Okay. Now we have our cube. What I want to set up with you is a few shapes going on here. So what we'll do is I'm going to keep our cube. I'm going to press S. Oh, this is a new thing now. We're going to introduce scaling. So we're going to make the cube a little bit smaller. So when you press S, you can kind of like go in and go out. Uh, we're going to make this cube a little bit smaller. Then we're going to press R, which is rotate. I'm going to press R, then I'm going to press Z. So now we're just rotating on the Z axis. And we're going to give it a little bit of depth here. So R, Z, we're just going to make it like that. Press R again, then press X to so keep it on the X axis. Now we're just going to kind of play with it. You can do this however you like. Now we're going to press S again. Now we have a square. Now we're going to grab it, G, press X, move it on the X axis. So now we have our cube. Uh, let's bring it a circle or a sphere, however you want to call it. Shift A. And then you're going to spawn in a UV sphere. Now we're going to do the same thing, G, X. I'm going to kind of like pull it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller, bring it like around there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale a little bit. So we're going to right click, shade smooth, and now we have a bit of a more smoother shape. Then we're going to duplicate it by pressing Shift D. For duplication and we're going to press Y I mean X keep it on the same axis and I kind of move things around here you know give it a little more depth I'm just gonna kind of just gonna kind of play with it now we want this I want to give it some more depth so we're gonna make this a little bit smaller we're gonna bring it back a little bit um, now let's spawn in another cube. Kind of just playing around here. Then we're gonna press shift. We're gonna make a nice little rectangle kind of shape. Sh uh, S Z. I'm gonna pull it up. Scale it. Oops. We're gonna scale it. Now we have this like kind of pillar kind of shape. I'm just gonna move it. Uh, maybe just rotate them a little bit, you know, just make it kind of fun and interesting. And grab both of our shapes. If you hold shift, just kind of rotate it. Press one, uh, grab these two. Bring this around here. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of a fun <clears throat> kind of thing to make it look kind of Cool. So we're going to go to our modifier tab, which is the blue wrench. Click add modifier to simple deform. Now we're twisting it and we're going to twist it on the Z axis. And now we have a bit of like this twisted kind of uh, fun shape. I'm just going to bring it back to the default 45. Um, not really feeling the circles right now, so we're gonna delete them. And we're gonna bring back the two shapes. We're gonna bring our I'm gonna shift D again with our square. Make it a little bit smaller. Scaling it, pressing S. Now we're getting a bit more of a composition, you know? I'm gonna duplicate another cube. Let's just bring it a little bit further. Right about there, you know? Something fun. And we're gonna do a fun little piece that a lot of people have been liking the metal kind of objects. So what we're gonna do is bring in a cylinder by pressing Shift A again. We got a cylinder. We're gonna go ahead and scale it a little bit, make it kind of small, which is like a rod. And we're gonna press S Z again, so we just scale it on the Z axis. And we're gonna 
bring it down again. Then we're going to grab it. Let's just get it away from these objects. And we're going to rotate it on the Y axis. Keep in mind, your Y, um, your Y and X axis might look a little different than mine. So there's a lot of, you know, things that are just kind of, uh, you might have to play with it. If it's not the X axis, then it's the Y axis. Uh, but as long as you keep things like that, I'm sure you can get the same kind of model I have going on here. I think we're working with some cool shapes now. You know, it's nothing too complicated, but I think we're ready to move on to the materials. Now, the materials essentially are the colors. This is <clears throat> making sure that, you know, things look kind of cool. They don't look too dull. Uh, what I want to do is keep this scene fairly simple. So we're just going to kind of use one material. Um, now, how you see the differences. Right now, we're kind of in this uh, solid kind of space. Once you click wire and you hold Z, you pop up the wireframe. You can switch it to material preview. This looks kind of cool already. Rendered, which is just like this dark zone. Um, we need to add some light and I'm going to keep it fairly simple uh, for you, for everyone. We're going to go ahead and spawn a few light bulbs in, but we need to set up the entire kind of environment. Now, going back over to our little bit of like our, I like to call our left hand workspace. I'm going to open up the plane and then kind of just scale this up again, bring it down a little bit. I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick. So let's just rotate on over. We're going to go ahead and just, since we already have our positioning with our camera set up, just bring this a little bit up. Then we're going to press tab, which enters our edit mode. And then within the edit mode, up here on the left hand corner, you're going to select edge select. You're going to click the one side of your plane and you're gonna press E to extrude. When you, once you press E, you press Y or X, depending on whatever direction you have it set up in. And you wanna pull back a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is after you extrude it a little bit to one direction, you're gonna press E again, extrude up with the Z axis. Then you're gonna go ahead and click right in between here. And you're gonna press Control B. And that's gonna activate beveling. Now you kind of, you can see you can pull it. And what you want to do is scroll with your mouse wheel. And now you'll have a bit of this like smoother kind of backdrop. And we're going to come out of edit mode. So you can press tab again, right click, shade smooth. And now you can see we kind of have some dead, some like dark spots over here and the left and the right. I don't want to uh, make that a little bit nicer. So we're just going to collect, click our plane, press S to scale, but we're going to scale it specifically on the X axis. Let me scroll up. And there we go. Now we kind of have something going now. Now we have this backdrop, um, which frankly, like if you just looked at a material preview, it's like, oh, this is kind of, this is kind of something, but we need to add a little more color to our field. So I'm going to go over to the little uh, right hand corner and we're going to make our back our background uh, black because right now it's kind of this gray. Now you can see it's su super duper dark. What you're going to do now is we need to spawn in some lights. So I'm going to make a second half of this tutorial which, which, which is going to use an HDRI and we're, for right now, for anyone that just wants to get this done as quick as they can, I'm just going to have the uh, default, some default uh, lights. So we're going to press shift A once again, scroll down, and you're going to bring in an area light. Now, the reason why we're using an area light is just because you can kind of see now, so we scroll, get this Actually, to be honest, the reason why I use area light is my one of my personal favorites. There's a bunch of use cases, but 
We're gonna set up some something called three point lighting. So right now we have a light bulb directly on top. We wanna keep that, right? Then we're gonna duplicate. So you're gonna do sh shift D again, duplicate. And you're gonna move another light. Move it to the one that side. And you're gonna duplicate another one. Let's bring it on the other side. It's looking kind of cool so far, right? And now we're going to go ahead and um, rotate. So press R and you're going to rotate the light on the Y axis. You might need to play around with between the Y and the X, like I said, and to see which one kind of sets up yours. So now we have something called a three point light. So you have a light coming from the top, light coming from the left, and light coming from the right. And uh, we're going to go ahead and Click our little light bulb section here. Let's bump this up a little bit. Let's do 50 watts. So we got one light there, 50 watts, another light right here, 50 watts, another light right there. So right now we got some interesting looking shapes. Now if it doesn't look the same for you, uh, well it looks like I have it on default, so we're okay. What we're gonna do is to activate ambient occlusion, activate bloom activate screen space reflections and now we have this really pretty kind of like uh, setup going on here now i want to make these materials a little more interesting so what i like to do now is we're going to create another workspace so you're going to come down to these like uh i like to call them it's just like the dividers of the, of the workspaces and just Right click again, make a horizontal split. I make to bring it up about halfway. Then what we're gonna do is click this little tag on the top left hand corner and bring it into shader editor. And what we're gonna do is now create the material. So when you click new, you get, this is called the node kind of setup. And over right here is where you can play around with materials. Like you can make the color different. You can make it more metallic you can make it kind of like glass or a little more reflective like if you upped all the metallic look at that it's looking kind of crazy you don't even know i don't even know what we're doing now <laughs> um but we're gonna bring the reference back up and just kind of mess with it so i'm gonna keep this really simple and have all the same kind of uh shapes i mean materials so we're just gonna play with one material and i'm gonna show you how to link all of them um so I want to make kind of like I've learned how to make this like wax like material it looks really good so what you do is you turn all the way up the subsurface and depending on how you feel about it right because it looks kind of cool already you can play with the colors so if we want it to be like this uh, pinkish kind of like color you just pull it on a little bit I like this kind of like wax kind of material and I'm gonna turn down my metallic. I'm going to kind of play my roughness a little bit and leave it like it is. And I'm gonna name this wax material. It's up to you and what you wanna name it. Now, I'm gonna show you how to pretty much copy and paste all these materials. What you're gonna do is you're gonna select all of your objects and then you're gonna select our cube that we just made last. And you're gonna do, you're gonna press Control L, link materials, and all the materials now should be linked. Now, let's do one last thing, then I'm gonna go over to the render settings. What we're gonna do is create a new material. I'm gonna use make this into like a metal kind of thing. So what we're gonna do is click um, the new material button kind of in the node the node uh, area and what we'll do is kind of copy it but it did create a new material for us and I'm just gonna name it metal and we're gonna up the metallic I'm gonna turn down the subsurface and we're gonna make this a bit more of like a white turn down the roughness a little bit and I think 
Well, good for right now on this. And now, I think this is pretty much good to render now at this point. So what we're gonna do is start playing with our rendering settings here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click um, the top like camera-like icon. I'm a, I like to crank my render up times two, 128. Um, let's give the, let's click on our cam camera. Let's give it a bit of depth of field. I like to do that just so I can kind of have a decent understanding. Yeah, I got a bit of depth of field here. So the background's kind of blurring now. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Go back up to our, our camera icon. There's a kind of like a printer kind of icon here. Now, what you're gonna do is we're pretty much just gonna set up the location on where you want to save this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of toss this somewhere. Um, now to render it, all you do is you come up to this render uh, tab, click render image. And this is a fairly simple scene, so it shouldn't really take that long to render it. And that's pretty much the the work here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up and uh, thanks for coming to my first ever tutorial. Let me know if there's any suggestions or any tips or tricks you wanna know and we can work on that together. See ya.